Fatum. You are welcome to my presentation on consignment accounts. Consignment accounts. In this presentation, I will examine the meaning of consignment accounts. Meaning of consignment accounts. The definition of the various terms. Definition of the various terms used in consignment accounts. The preparation of account sales. Account sales. And I will also examine the various accounts required in the books of the consignor. Accounts required in the books of both the consignor, both the consignor and the consignee. The accounts required in the books of the consignor and the consignee. I will as well examine how to determine the value of unsold stocks. Valuation of unsold stocks. If this is your first time of coming across this channel or if you have not subscribed in the past, please click the red subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell icon so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. What do we mean by consignment? Consignment. Consignment is the process of sending goods from the principal to his agent for sales. The process of sending goods, the process of dispatching the goods from the principal to his agent for sales. The principal will send the goods to the agent while the agent will be the one to sell the goods. An agent sells the goods in return for commission. Meaning that agent will only receive commission for his own services. Agent will receive commission for his own services. So that is consignment. The process of sending goods from the principal to his agent. After that, the agent will then sell the goods received from the principal in return for commission. After that, the reward of an agent on this contract is the commission received by the agent from the principal on the sales made by the agent. Commission is usually calculated as a percentage of the sales revenue. Meaning that if the total sales by the agent, total sales, if it is ten thousand, ten thousand dollar, and the agent commission or agency commission, if it is ten percent of sales, let us assume it is ten percent of sales revenue. So that means the commission that will be received by the agent will be ten percent of the ten thousand dollar. That is the ten percent of the sales revenue, and that will give us one thousand dollar. So, agent receives commission for the goods sold, for the goods sold by him. So, now, what are the technologies used in consignment account? We want to examine the technologies. So, definition of terms. Definition of terms. The number one term I'm going to examine is the consignor. Consignor. We don't call it consignor or the principal. Consignor or the principal. This is the owner of the goods. The owner of the goods is the consignor. The person who sends the goods to the agent for sales is the consignor. We don't call them the consignor or the principal. They are the owner of the goods. So the agent will be the one that will procure the goods. I mean, the principal, the consignor will be the one that will procure the goods. That is, the consignor buys the goods and then will now send it to the agent for sales. So, the principal, upon purchase of the goods, the principal will incur the purchase price or purchase cost of the goods. Purchase cost and some expenses will be incurred by the consignor, that is, by the principal. Expenses like the import 
duties and others. Import duty. Number two, we have the consignee. I've told you that consigning is the agent. It's an agent that receives the goods from the consignor for sales. The agent that receives the goods from the consignor is called the consignee. Remember, I've told you that the consignor is the principal, while the agent is the consignee. Agents receive the goods from the consignor and sell it in return for commission. That is number two. Number three, we have the commission. Commission, I feel that the commission is the amount received by the consignee, that is the agent, from the consignor for his own service. So, agent receives commission for his own service. I told you that that commission is usually a fixed percentage of sales. And I have, to, I have demonstrated how to calculate the agency commission. So, the, is the amount received. Commission is the amount received by the consignee from the consignor for his own service. That is consignee. Then we also have their credit commission. Their credit commission. Their credit commission. Their credit commission is the additional commission given to an agent who agreed to bear any badness that arises from the sales made by him. The additional commission or the extra commission given to an agent who agreed to indemnify the principal uh, from the bad debt that arises from the sales made by him. The, com the extra commission or the additional commission given to an agent who agrees to bear the badness that arises from the sales made by him. That commission is said to be their credit commission. I've told you that if you look at my definition, their credit commission arises from credit from the credit sales. That means your debt credit commission will be calculated on the credit sales. Your debt credit commission will be calculated on the credit sales, not on the total sales. It will be calculated on the credit sales. But unless stated otherwise, you should know that all sales are made on credit. That is, all transactions in accounts are on credit. If you have not been told that certain amount of sales are on cash basis, that means you assume that all your sales are on credit. In that case, your debt credit commission will be calculated on the total sales, where you are not told that the certain amount of your sales are on cash. So you assume that all your sales are on credit. I told you that your debt credit commission is usually calculated on the credit sales. Now, number five is the account sales. Account sales. Remember, I told, uh, as explained earlier, the consignee is an agent, uh, an agent of the principal. Being an agent, he is expected to send return on a regular basis to the principal. Consignee is an agent of the principal. Being an agent, he is expected to send returns on a regular basis to the principal. So, the returns are sent on a document known as account sales. The return sent by the agent to the principal are sent on a document known as the account sales. No, I told you that the agent is the one sending that returns to the consignor. That is, the consignee is the one to send the account sales to the consignor. Consignor is the principal, while the consignee is the agent. Consignee is the one that will send the account sales to the principal. Account sales, it will contain the return sent by the consignee to the consignor. The return sent by the agent to the principal. So that returns is usually contained on a document known as the account sales. The return sent by the agent to the principal. The return sent by the consignee to this consignor is usually sent on a document known as the account sales. Therefore, what is then the account sales? Account sales is the document sent by the consignee to the consignor. I'll tell you that agent is the one that usually sends this document to the principal. 
Therefore, Atan says is the document sent by the agent to the principal. Or you can say the document sent by the consignee to the consignor. Showing the sales made by him to date. This document will show the sales made by the agent to date. It will as well show the expenses incurred by the agent. That is expenses of the agent, expenses of the consignee. This document will also contain the expenses of the consignee. It will as well contain the commission of the consignee. And if there is debt credit commission, it will as well be specified. Then, and the balance to be remitted by the consignee to the consignor. A document sent by the agent to the principal showing the sales made by him, the expenses of the agent, the commission to the agent, and the balance to be remitted by the agent to the principal. That document is known as the account sales. I repeat, account sales is the document sent by the consignee. The document sent by the agent to the principal. The document sent by the consignee to the consignor. Showing the gross sales made by the agent. That is showing the sales made by the consignee. The expenses of the consignee. The commission payable to the consignee. And the balance to be remitted to the consignor. That is the balance to be remitted to the principal. So that is account sales. Now, have an examined the various technologies used in consignment account I therefore want to consider the accounts required what are the accounts you will need to prepare accounts required in the books in the books of the consignor that is accounts you will need to prepare in the book of the consignor in the book of the principal and I want you to know that the consignor and consignee, consignor and the consignee. After that, the consignor is the principal. Why the consignee is the agent? Consignor and consignee is a form of debtors and creditors relationship. Both the consignor and the consignee are the form of the debtors and the creditors relationship. The relationship between both of them is a debtors and creditors relationship. Therefore, in the books of the consignee, you will need to prepare the following account. Number one, consignment account. Consignment account. Consignment account prepared here is a form of profit or loss account. That is, it is an account prepared to ascertain the profits or losses on the consignment. The purpose of preparing this consignment account is to ascertain the profits or losses on the consignment. At the debit side, you have the expenses of the consignor and the expenses of the consignee. Expenses of the consignor, that is expenses of the principal. Then, consigning expenses as well. Expenses. After that, expenses of the principal may include the purchase price or the purchase cost of the goods, some import duties, and some other expenses, insurance. So, those ones will be incurred by the consignor. So, all the expenses incurred by the consignor, you are going to debit it to the consignment account. Then the expenses of the consignee, you know, consignee will provide a warehouse for the goods. That is, consignee will provide storage for the goods. So the expenses in Kia, which involve the warehouse expenses or storage expenses, the selling expenses, so the agent is the one to sell the goods, or the expenses that relate to say, such as the carriage outwards, carriage outwards, the selling expenses or distribution expenses, all expenses that relate to sales, including the agent, agent commission, that is the consigning commission, as well as the debt credit commission, all those expenses incurred by the agent will be at the debit side of the consignment account. After that, at the debit side of the consignment account, you are going to have the expenses incurred by the consignor 
I've given you the examples of those expenses that will be incurred by the and the expenses of the consignee. And at the credit side, we have the sales. The sales and the value of unsold inventory. Unsold inventories. Unsold inventory will be valued. That is, unsold stocks, it will be valued and it will be credited to the consignment account. We will still consider how to value the unsold stocks or unsold inventories later. And at the end of the period, when you total this, you have this as the total. Then, after that, the consignee expenses include the agency commission, that means the commission by the uh, payable to the agent, and the debt credit commission will have also be debited. So you look for the debits, the difference between the two sides. We are the credit side, they see the debit side. Then you have profit on consignment. You have profit on consignment. We are the credit side, they see the debit side. We are the credit side, they see the debit side. You have profit on consignment. And we are the debit side, they see the credit side. You have loss on consignment. Loss on consignment. Loss on consignment, we are the total of the debit side, I see the total of the credit side. And you have profit on this consignment, we are the total of the credit side, I see the total of the debit side. So that is consignment account. The primary purpose of preparing this account is to ascertain the profit or losses of consignment. Remember, we are considering the accounts required in the books of the consignment. Then, we, we also have the consignee account. I want you to know that it is the consignor that is the principal that will prepare the account of the agent. Consignee account. Consignee account. So, your consignee account, I've told you that consignee and consignor relationship is a form of debtors and creditor to, uh, relationship. Being a debtors account, meaning that it is expected to have a debit balance. That is, the debit side is expected to have the credit. Uh, it is expected to be greater than the credit side. So, at the debit side, you are going to have the sales. You have the sales. Then, at the credit side, after that, you either have sales or revenue. You either call it sales or revenue. And at the credit side, you have the consigning expenses. Consigning expenses. I'm giving you some examples of the concerning expenses, such as the selling expenses, storage expenses, storage expenses, some examples, then the carriage outwards, carriage outwards, carriage outwards, selling expenses, selling expenses. We have the concerning commission. Agents, agency commission. Then you also have the debt credit commission. Commission. Then the debt will represent the balance to be remitted to the consignor. The debit side is expected to be greater than the credit side. So the different the amount by which the debit side exceeds the credit side will be the balance to be remitted to the consignor. So you don't need to, there is no consignor expenses. You only consider the consigning expenses. So balance to be remitted. Balance to be remitted. Remitted to the consignor. To the consignor. And this balance may be remitted in form of bids. Form of bills of fetching, where we are going to have bills payable, bills, bills receivable. To be a bills receivable, or it may be remitted in the form of cash or bank. So, this is another account you will need to prepare in the book of the consignor. I told you that in the book of consignor, you are going to prepare the consignee account, that is the debtor's account. Consignee is, is a debtor to the agent, uh, to the principal. Then you also have this payable account. 
this, I mean, this receivable account. This receivables account. This receivables account. So, we are going to have consignee. And we have this, this is settled, then we have bank or cash. Then you may also prepare goods on consignment account. Goods on consignment account. Goods on consignment account. Or consignment outwards account. So this goods on consignment, the value of the goods purchased by the consignor, which have been debited to the consignment account. Remember the double entry principles. For every debit entry, there will be a corresponding credit entry. This goods on consignment has been debited to the consignment account. So you are going to credit goods on, consign uh, goods on consignment. So we now have consignment. Since the debit entry is in the consignment account, so you have consignment account, then it will be close to trading account. So you are going to have purchases. To be close to trading account as purchases. So these are the accounts you will need to prepare in the books of the consignor in the book of the principals. In addition to this account, in, you may be asked to prepare the necessary accounts in the books, accounts required. In the books of the consignee. These are the accounts you will need to prepare in the books of the consignee. Number one, consignor account. Consignor account. That is the account of the principal. It is the agent that will prepare that. Two. Then we have bills pay, uh, bills payable account. And number three, account. Sales. Account sales. Now remember, I told you that the relationship between the consignor and the consignee is a form of debtors and creditors relationship. So, the consignor is a creditor. So, to open the consignor account in the books of the consignee, consignor account. It is just the opposite of the consignee account. Meaning that what has been debited in the consignee will be credited in the consignor account. And what has been credited in the consignee account will be debited to the consignor account. Remember, sales was debited. So we are going to credit that sales. Then consignee expenses, which was credited. Consignor expenses will not, be, will not be considered. It is the consignee expenses, which includes storage expenses. Selling expenses. Carriage outwards. Commission, that is agency commission. Their credit commission, and other expenses incurred by the agent. Upon this, the credit side would exceed the debit side, so you, the balance will be remitted in form of this of exchange, that is, to have this payable, or if it is remitted by cash or check, so you have bank. So that is the consignor account. Then you may open this payables account. This payables account. If you open this payables account, you have this payables account. This payable was, was debited to the consignor account, so you are going to credit the this payables account. So you have the consignor. 
And when it is settled, it may be settled by cash or by share. So you can bank. So that is this payable account. Then you may have the account says. I can't say it up to I can't say it. I can't say it. I've told you it's sent by the agent to the consignor. Showing the sales. So that means you are going to have the sales of the consignee, less consigning expenses. Less consigning expenses. The consigning expenses may also include the storage expenses. Storage expenses. You may also have the selling expenses. Selling expenses. You may also have carriage outwards. Carriage outwards. All the expenses incurred by the agent. Then we also have the commission of the agent. Commission. Then you may also have debt credit commission. Debt credit commission. Then when you sum up this, you have this. And when you less that from sales above, you get the balance to be remitted, which may be a form of bills of exchange. Bills payable or form of cash or check. And you put bank. Bank. So these are the accounts you may be asked to prepare in the books of the consignee. Having considered the accounts you may be asked to prepare in the books of the consignor and in the books of the consignee, I therefore want to consider a work example. Example, on 1st July 22x, Black consigned 40 tons of goods to his agent, White, at an invoice price of $750 per ton and drew a bill of exchange at 6 months for 60% of the value of the goods. Black incurred haulage charge of $2,000 of $2,000 on 31st December 22x. Black received an account sales from White showing that 30 tons had been sold at $1,000 per ton and 10 tons at $1,500 per, uh, per ton. The agent sent a bank draft for the balance due to the consignor after deducting the following. We have the insurance of $350 transportation charges of $750, then storage of $900, selling expenses of $1,500, agreed commission at 5% on sales. You are required to show the relevant ledger accounts in the books of the consignor, black, and the agent, white, including account sales. So that is the question, now the solution. So, in the entries, in the books of Black, remember Black is the consignor, that is the one that sent the goods to the agent. So I've told you that in the books of the Black, in the books of the consignor, you will need to open the consignment account. Consignment account. I've told you that consignment account is a form of profit or loss. It is an account prepared to ascertain the profits, profit or losses on consignment. And I've told you that in this account, at the debit side, you will have the expenses incurred by the consignor, that is, expenses incurred by the principal. And at the same time, you will also have the expenses incurred by the agent. While at the credit side, you have the sales or revenue, as well as the value of the unsold stock or unsold inventory. So now, let me start with the expenses of the consignor now. Expenses of the consignor, that is expenses of the principal. 
So we are starting with the expenses incurred by the principal. Back to the question. On 1st July 22x, meaning that the transaction took place in the year 22x. Now let me have 22x. 22x. 22 x so on 1st july 22 x black consigned 40 tons of goods to his agent white at an invoice price of 750 dollars per ton 40 tons were consigned at 750 per ton that is one ton is 750 dollars therefore goods on consignment now goods on consignment 40 tons at $750 per ton. So we have 40 times $750. 40 times $750. That gives us $30,000. 30000 Now back to the question. And drew a bill of exchange for Six months for 60% of the value of the goods. A bill is drawn. The black in kill holy charge of two thousand dollar. Remember, black is the consignor. So he kill holy charge. Holy charge of two thousand dollar. I think those are the expenses in kill by the consignor. The transaction took place as our first of July. So we have July 1st, July 1st, 22x. Then we also have the expenses of the consignee. Expenses of the consignee. That is the expenses incurred by the agent. On 31st December 22x, Black received an, an account sales from White showing that 30 tons have been sold at $1,000 per ton. So, sales of 30 tons, that is December 31st, 22x, we have the sales, sales of 30 tons at uh, $1,000 per ton, 30 times 1,000, that will give us 30,000. And 10 tons at $1,500 per ton. The same day, December 31st, we have the sales of 10 tons at 1,500 per ton. That will give us $15,000. The agent sent a bank draft for the balance due to the consignor after deducting the following. So these are the expenses incurred by the agent which include insurance, that is December 31st. We have insurance, insurance of $350. Then we also have transportation charges of $750. Transportation, the same day, December 31st. We have transportation. That is $750. Uh, $750. Then we have storage of $900. The same date, December 31st, we have the storage of $900. Then we have selling expenses of $1,500. December 31st, selling expenses of $1,500. Agreed commission at 5% on sales. Now, how much is the value of sales? The total sales is 30,000 plus 15,000. That is 45,000. And commission is 5% of sales. So that is 31st December. We have commission. Commission of 5% of sales. And our sales is 45,000. Therefore, you have 5% of 45,000. That gives us 2,250. 
250. So when you sum up all the expenses, 2,250 plus 1,500 plus 900 plus 750 plus 350 plus 2,000 plus 30,000. The total expenses is 37,750. And the total of credit side is 45,000. By the time you deduct 37,750, which is the total of the debit side, if you deduct it from 45,000, then you have the net difference of 7,250. 7,250. That is the profit on consignment. Profit on consignment. 7,250. The total will be 45,000. That is the consignment account. 45,000. Then, can as well open the goods on consignment account. Goods on consignment. Or consignment outwards account. This is the debit side and this is the credit side. Now, the value of the goods consigned is 30,000, which was debited to the consignment account. And the double entry principle states that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. Since debit entry is on the consignment account, therefore, its credit entry will go to goods on consignment account. So we have consignment consignment account and the value of the goods is $30,000 then at the end of the period it will be close to the income statement as your purchase so we have $30,000 that's all about that now you have to open the necessary ledger in the books of the black remember black is the consignment and I'll tell you that in the books of the consignor, you will need to open the consignee account. The next account is the consignee account. Who is the consignee? Now back to the question. We were told that on 1st July 22x, Black consigned 40 tons of goods to his agent, White. The consignee is White. I'll tell you that the consignee account will be opened in the books of, books of the consignor. Now let's open the consignee account, that is white account. Consignee account. Consignee that is white. That is the agent account. This is the account of the agent. I told you that the agent is like a debtor to the consignor. It's like a debtor to the consignor. So, as a result of that, it will have a debit balance. So, at the credit side, you have 6. 6, December 31st, and that is 30,000. 22x. 22x. As at December 31st, you have 6 of... 30,000. Then, as of December 31st, as well, you have another series of 15,000. December 31st of the same year, we also have series of 15,000. Then, the expenses incurred by the agent will be credited to the consignee account. But back to the question. You were told that the agent sent a bank draft for the balance due to the consignor after deducting the following expenses. These are the expenses of the agent. At the inception, you were told that on 1st July 22x, Black consigned 4 tons of goods to his agent, White, at an invoice price of 750 dollar per ton and drew a bill of exchange at six months for 60 percent 
of the value of the goods. And the value of the goods consigned, goods on consignment, that is 450 times 750, we have 30,000. Then, and this goods was consigned as at 1st of July 22x. So we have July 1st. We have bills of exchange, bills receivable, which is 60% of the value of the goods. And the value of the goods is 30,000. So if you calculate 60% of 30,000, that will give us 18,000. 18,000 dollars. All the expenses of the consignee, expenses of the consignee, not the expenses of the consignor. That is, the expenses incurred by the agent, including the agency commission, will be credited. So you have insurance as of December 31st. December 31st, we have insurance. Insurance of 350. Insurance of 350. Then we also have transport of 750 as at the same date. Uh, transport of 750. Then we also have storage of 900. Storage. That is 900. Then we have selling expenses. Selling expenses of uh, 1,500. Then we have the commission of 2,250. Commission. 2,250. If you total the debit side, you have 30,000 plus 15,000. That is 45,000. Then, you were told that Black in Cure, okay, the agent sent a bank draft for the balance due to the consignor. So the balance was was sent in form of bank draft. So you have 18,000. Let's add the credit side. 18,000 plus 350 plus 750 plus 900 plus 1,500 plus 2,250. The total of credit side is 23,750. Then if you subtract it from 45,000, being the total of the debit side, then you have the difference of 21,250. That is the bank draft. Bank draft. 21,250. 21,250. If you now add it, if you add it to the other items at the credit side, you have the total to be 45,000. There is no place to write the 45,000 here. So you should know that there is 45,000 under. So that is the consigning account. Then, in the book, books of the consigning as well, you may open the BIS receivable account. BIS receivable account. And we have 18,000 as the balance. So, bills receivable, bills receivable account. So, as the credit side of the consignee account, you have 18,000. 
which is the first of July, eighteen thousand. So that means for every debit entry, you have a credit entry. This will take a debit entry in the this receivable account, July thirty first. So we have consignee that is white. That is eighteen thousand. Then you also have at the end of the period because you were told you were told that a six month base was drawn. Six months time now will be December thirty first. This is July first. December thirty first. Then it will be set. To, then you have bank eighteen thousand. These are the entries required in the books of the consignor. You are to open the necessary accounts in the books of the consignee. In the books. Books of the consignee. Remember the consignee is white. White is the consignee that is the agent. It is the consignee that will open the account of the consignor. So we have consignor account. That is black account. Consignor account is the opposite of the consignee account we have opened. Opposite of the consignee. This is just a creditor account. Consignor is a creditor to the consignee. So the sales which have been debited in the consignee account, the sales which have been debited in the consignee account will be credited to consignor account. Now they have the year is 22x. 22x. So December 31st, you have sales. The first sales is 30,000. And the second sale as at that same date is 15,000. Then in the consignee account, we have bills receivable. This bills receivable because bills, bills payables. And Items that have been credited in the consignee account will be debited in the consignor account. So we have July 1st. July 1st. Bills payable. Bills payable. That is 18,000. Then the consigning expenses. Consigning expenses. The expenses incurred by the consignee include insurance of 350, transport of 750. So now, consignee expenses, December 31st, we have insurance, 350, we have the transport, transport expenses of 750, then we also have storage of 900 and selling expenses of 1,500. December 31st, storage, 900. Selling expenses, selling expenses of 1,500. Now, they will also have agency commission of 2,250. Commission, December 31st, commission of 2,250. The balance was remitted as a bank draft and that balance is 21,250 so we have bank 21,250 that is so the total of the debit side will still be 45,000 and the total of the credit side is 45,000 I transferred all these items from the consignee ledger, consignee, I mean consignee account. All these items, I transferred them directly from the consignee account. That means the same items were debited. You no, know, this is the consignor account. The same items you have at the debit side in the consignor account here yeah, were credited to the consignee account. And the same items that were credited here were debited to the consignee account. That means the consignor and the consignee account are opposite to each other. The same items will be 
uh, recorded in the two accounts. Just that those items that taste a debit entry here will taste a credit entry in the consignee account. And those items that take a credit entry in the consignor account will take a debit entry in the consignee account. Then the bills payable. So in the book of the consignee, you may have the bills payable. Bills payable account. Bills payable. Bills payable account. The same by debit side and credit side. Twenty two S. Twenty two S. Asset. You no, know, it was debited in the consignor account. So you are going to credit the bills payable account. That is July first. We have consignor. That is white. Of eighteen thousand, and at the end of the year, this amount will be settled through the bank. So we have eighteen thousand at the end of the six months period, because the bills is draw for six months. Finally, we can draw the account sales. Account sales. Remember, I told you that account sales. Account sales. Is prepared by the consignee and forwarded to the consignor. It shows the gross sales by the consignee, less the consignee expenses. So now we have sales. The first sales was made as a December 31st. Sales of 30,000. And as at the same date, you have another sales of 15,000. The gross sales. By the consigning to date is 45,000. Now less consigning expenses. Less consigning expenses. The same expenses. Like you have insurance of 350, transport of 750. Insurance. That is three fifty. Transport of seven fifty. Then you also have storage of nine hundred. Storage of nine hundred. Then you have selling expenses of one thousand five hundred. Selling expenses, expenses of 1,500. Finally, you have the commission, commission of 2,250. Commission, 2,250. This is total. 350 plus 750 plus 900 plus 1,500 plus 2,250 then you have 5,750 5,750 if you remove the 5,750 from 45,000 then you have 39,250 39,250 then from this you let bits of exchange bits of Exchange. You know the bills that was initially drawn. That was eighteen thousand. When you less the bills of eighteen thousand, so from thirty nine thousand two fifty, thirty nine two fifty. Let's subtract zero five two fifty eight from nine one one from three that is two which is twenty one thousand two fifty. This is the balance. 
balance to be remitted to the consignor that is white, which is still the same amount you have in your bank. That is, you have as bank here, which is also the same amount you have as bank here. So, that is the entries required in the books of the consignor and the consignee. This is the end of the part one of my presentation on consignment account. Part two shall cover the treatment of unsold stocks or unsold inventories. That is, how unsold stocks can be valued in consignment account, how unsold stocks can be valued and how they shall be accounted for or they shall be examined in part two. Thanks.